Hi everybody. Today my topic is elastic beam theory and flexor theory. Before going in depth of it, first we shall discuss about statics of beam action. So as we know beam supports applied loads and its own weight primarily by internal moments and shears here it is a beam this one because axial load n is equal to 0 r n equal to 0 r n equal to 0 so it is a beam this beam is a structural member because it supports its own dead weight w per unit length this one plus a concentrated load p applied load this one the application of loads to a structure causes the structure to deform and due to this deformation various forces such as internal moments and shears are produced in the components that comprise the structure for this reason beam can supports applied loads and as well its own weight primarily by its internal moments and shears is a very important points the load w and p causes bending moments and it is shown in this diagram this bending moment is a load effect which is calculated from the loads by using the laws of statics here i have taken a section a at the mid points so if we want to know the bending moment at this point so we have to see the bending moment diagram at this ordinate this is the moment at section a the tangential components are the shear stresses which resist the transverse or shear forces here tangential components are shear stresses it resists the transverse force or shear force this is the force v and v upward downwards so this shear force beside in between i have also marked this moment we will see in the next slide about this moments here c and t are normal to the section here it says the components that are normal to the section are the bending stresses which resist the bending moment at the section so here c and t are normal to the section and as a bending stress it resists the bending moments in previous slide we have seen the bending moments and at this section this free body diagram we can see the compression c 
and T force coupled with this lever JD creates internal moment M. Internal resisting moment M, it results from an internal compressive force C. You see here C. And an internal tensile force T in both cases. And these two are separated by it's called liver arm ZD. As we have seen in previous slide, no external axial load. I mean it was n equal to 0. So summation of horizontal forces means C minus T equal to 0. So we can write very easily C equal to T. Now, if the moments are summed about an axis through the point of application of this compressive force C, then the moment equilibrium of the free body gives M equal to CJD. In the same way, if the moments are summed about the point of application of the tensile force T, the moment equilibrium of the free body gives M equal to TJD. Already we have found C equal to T. So these two equations are identical. The conventional elastic beam theory results an equation which is sigma equal to my by i. We can see it here. my by i. Actually, which is an uncracked homogeneous rectangular beam without reinforcement. This one. I mean, this equation, it is for an uncracked homogeneous rectangular beam without reinforcement. Here we can see the distribution of stresses. The result of the compressive stress force we can write C equal to from here compression stress block we get this this C is equal to the volume of the compressive stress block this one its volume to the compressive stress block the force c and t c and t acts through the centroid of the volume of the respective stress block this is compressive stress block this is also tensile stress block So, in the elastic situation, these forces act at h by 3 above and below the neutral axis. This is the neutral axis above and below h by 3. That's why we can write very easily zt equal to h by 3 plus h by 3 equal to 2h by 3 because this is jd. In previous slide we have seen that. So 
if we put this value c and jd in the equations of this moment equal to c j d if we put this value it comes like this through simplification we can arrange this way then it will appear like this and at an end through simplification we get sigma c equal to m y by i bending stress equations The theory of flagger for reinforced concrete it is based on three basic assumptions and which are sufficient to calculate the moment resistance of a beam first assumption sections perpendicular to the axis of bending that are plane before bending remains plane after bending this one in short we can say plane sections remain plane and these assumptions made in the development of flexel theory for beams the second assumption at the same level the strain in the concrete is equal to the strain in the reinforcement this second assumption it is very very important and it is necessary because the concrete and the reinforcement must act together to carry the load this assumption implies a perfect bond between the concrete and the steel it is very important third assumption the stresses in the reinforcement and the concrete can be computed from the strains using stress strain curves for concrete and steel actually this third assumption will be demonstrated in the development of moment curvature relationships for beam sections actually moment curvature relationship is used to describe the flexural behavior of a variety of beam sections and in this diagram the first stage of the diagram is for a small moments less than the cracking moment mcr this area where the entire beam cross section is available to resist bending this is very important points and in this range the strains are small and the diagram is nearly vertical and very close to a straight line you can see it here when the moment is increased beyond the cracking moments i mean this part the slope of the curve will decrease a little it decreases a little because the beam is not quite as stiff as it was in the initial stage before the concrete cracked it's important to understand the diagram almost a straight line from mcr to the point where the reinforcement is stressed to its yield points here and until the steel yields a fairly large additional load is required to appreciably i mean appreciably increase the beam deflections so after the steel yields the beam has very little additional moment capacity and only a small additional load is required to substantially increase rotation as well as deflections and the slope of the diagram is now very very flat 
this part. So it's very important moment curve diagram. It actually illustrate the flexural behavior of a beam cross sections under increased moment. Under increased moments, it illustrates the flexural behavior of the beam cross sections. That's what we have seen here. Here we can see actual stress block, this one and equivalent rectangular stress block, this one right hand side. For simplification, SCI code and A23.3 permits the use of equivalent rectangular concrete stress distribution for ultimate flexural strength calculation. And this rectangular stress block, this right hand side, this one, it is originally proposed by Whitney. That's why it called Whitney stress block. To get clear understanding of it, we have to know three points. A concrete stress, first point is a concrete stress of this one, alpha 1 F prime C is assumed to be uniformly distributed over an equivalent compression zone bounded by the edges of the cross sections and a straight line located parallel to the neutral axis this is the neutral axis this one parallel to the neutral axis at a distance this one a equal to beta 1 c from the concrete fiber with the maximum compressive stress this part and second point is the distance c from the fiber this one distance c from the fiber of maximum compressive strain to the neutral axis is measured is measured perpendicular to the neutral axis it's very clear here and another important things is the symbol alpha 1 and beta 1 here we can see two things one is alpha 1 one is beta 1 are used to describe actually this rectangular stress block factor and how to get the value of alpha 1 beta 1 we have to use these two formula and also there is a limitations value should not be greater than equal to 0 0.67 and 0 0.67 and for a rectangular compressive zone of constant with B and depth to the neutral axis is C, the resultant compressive force is this one. C equal to alpha 1, beta 1, F prime C, B C. It's very important. The basic design equations for flexor is very important points because factor resistance must be greater than or equal to effect of factor loads. Symbolically, MR greater than or equal to MF. MF is the moment due to factored load. We can see it here as well. MR is the factored moment resistance of the cross sections. Here, one important point. Factored moment resistance of the cross section. This factored. This factored moment, that's why this MR is very important point. MR is calculated using two resistance factor. And those are this phi C and phi S. Why we use it? To reduce the strength of concrete and reinforcement. F prime C and F Y to reduce the value of this. The resistance factors, these two, are used actually 
having an intention to account for possible variation of dimension of cross sections and of material strength even and as well for possible uncertainties in strength equation. That's why we need to use these two resistance factor phi c and phi s. Now beam flexure failure is very important topics. There are three ways of beam flexure failure. First way it is tension failure. Tension failure in other way we can say it is under reinforced. It means reinforcement yields before concrete crashes. A beam develops a tension failure when the reinforcement yielded before failure occurred. The reason is at failure it is by testing that the curvature at the section of maximum moment is roughly four times than at yielding. As a result beam deflects extensively and develops wide cracks. This type of behavior is said to be ductile because if we see moment curvature or what we have seen before in previous slides, if we look at the moment curvature diagram, then we will observe a long plastic region. There is a big advantage for this type of failure because it gives warning of impending failure to the occupants of the building so that there is an opportunity to leave the building before building collapse. So we can say it is of course a desirable I mean design. And if we verify the situation of this type of failure, then we will see that mechanical reinforcement ratio with this formula rho Fy by F prime C is small. And of course it was ductile moment curvature failure as I mentioned already. And there are three important things here. Maximum compressive strain in concrete. It is 0 0.0035. Tensile strain in steel. Epsilon S greater than or equal to Epsilon Y. It is yield strain. And stress in steel. Fs equal to Fy. It is very important. This third point. Fs equal to Fy. The second way of failure, it is compression failure or in other way I can say over reinforced. It means concrete crashes before steel yields. Concrete control mode failure means reinforced concrete beam characterized by large amount of reinforcement. We can call this beam a over reinforced and this type of failure is of course undesirable. The beam fails without experiencing significant deformations and it is a characteristic of brittle behavior. The occupants of the building do not have enough time to escape. That is why it is undesirable. In this situation, stress and strain distribution are like epsilon C max compressive strain 0 0.0035, tensile strain in steel, epsilon S, epsilon Y, and epsilon S less than epsilon Y yield strain, stress in steel, Fs less than Fy. Tension reinforcement does not yield. 
and important another criteria mechanical reinforcement ratio omega rho f y f prime c is high previous one was low this is high third way is the balanced failure or balanced reinforced reinforcement yields and concrete crushes both happen simultaneously that is the most important points reinforcement yields and concrete crushes both happens at the same time so it marks the balance point between steel control failure and concrete control failure that's why we can say that beam is reinforced with intermediate amount of reinforcement and in this situation maximum compressive strain in concrete reaches the value of 0.0035 and tensile strain in steel epsilon s equal to epsilon y yield strain and es epsilon s is same stress in steel fs equal to fy so very important points fs equal to fy equal in balanced reinforced conditions that's all for today thanks for watching please subscribe thanks again